Hey, this is Presh Towalker. Let's play a card game. Every card has a letter on one side and a number on the other side. In front of you are four cards, D, K, 3, and 7. The cards are manufactured according to a rule. Every card that has a D on one side has a 3 on the other. The question is, which card or cards need to be turned over to check if the rule has been followed? Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. So what's the correct answer? You do need to check the D card, but you also need to check the 7 card. You do not need to check the K card or the 3 card. If you didn't solve this, don't worry, you're in good company. Only about 10% of people correctly solve this. This task was developed in the 1960s by the psychologist Peter Wason. The Wason selection task has been replicated thousands of times in the decades following, and still only about 10% of people correctly solve this. Why is it so difficult? To answer that, let's go over why you need to check only D and 7. Let's analyze each card individually. We'll start with D. The rule states that every card that has a D on one side has a 3 on the other. This can be translated into the logical statement, if D, then 3. So naturally, we need to check a card that has a D does have a 3 on the other side. So we have the set of cards that have a D on one side, and that's contained within the set of cards that have a 3 on the other side. So definitely, we need to check the D card. So if the D card has a 3 on the other side, then we know the rule is being followed. But if it has some other number, we know the rule is not being followed. We definitely need to check the D card. What about the card with the K? We know if D, then 3. But if K, then what? We don't know. It could be that every card that has a K has a 3 on the other side. It could be that some cards with the K have a 3 on the other side. Or K and 3 could be mutually exclusive events. We don't know from the rule if D, then 3. So if we flipped over the K card and we found a 3, that wouldn't have anything to do with the rule. And if we flipped over the K card and found a 4, that again would have nothing to do with the rule. We don't need to check the K card. Now what about the card with the 3? This is a little bit more tricky to understand. So we know if D, then 3. But if 3, then what? We don't know. We know that all cards with the D have a 3 on the other side, but we don't know exactly what's going on with 3. If we flip over the card with 3 and we find it does not have a D on the other side, that would be fine. That would not violate the rule. If we flip it over and it does have a D, that would also be fine. So no matter what, we don't need to check the card that has a 3. Now what about the card that has a 7? So if D, then 3. So let's take a look at this. Consider the entire sample space and consider the area not 3. So if we have not 3, that will definitely be not D. This is the contrapositive of if D, then 3. Now 7 is a number that's not 3. So if 7, then not D. So we definitely do need to check the 7 card. We want to make sure it does not have a D. If we flip over the 7 card and it's not a D, that would be fine. But if we flip it over and there is a D, this would violate the rule because we found a card with D on one side that does not have a 3 on the other. So we definitely do need to check the 7 card. So to summarize, we do need to check the D card, we do need to check the 7 card, but we do not need to check the K or the 3 cards. This is the correct answer, and only about 10% of people correctly solve the question. Now what about mathematicians? At the University of Warwick, Matthew Inglace and Adrian Simpson tried the Wayson selection task on mathematicians 
who are trained in logical thinking. You might think that mathematicians solve this problem 100% of the time correctly. That's not what they found. So they tested math students, math staff, and history students. Now to summarize this table, overall, 94% of all people asked did pick D. So it was generally understood that you do need to check the D card. That's a good thing. Now what about the correct answer of D and seven? So there were incorrect answers given by 71% of math students, 57% of math staff, and 92% of history students, which resembles the general population of the waste and selection task. So what does this tell you? Overall, mathematicians scored very poorly on this task, given that logic is a central part of studying mathematics. Even mathematicians find this question to be difficult. So where were the common mistakes? Many people picked D or D3 alone. Other people thought of DK and seven. Some people thought of picking all of the cards, which would actually be fine. If you have an employee, you say, I wanna make sure the cards are correct. It would actually be fine if someone checked all of the cards, but this is not the correct answer to the puzzle. So if only 10% of people are logical, how can society function at all? Let's put this problem in a little different context. Imagine every single card represents a person. On one side of the card is the beverage the person is drinking, and on the other side of the card is the person's age. So you're given four cards, beer, coffee, 25, and 16. Suppose there's a rule that a person drinking beer must be over 20 years old. Which card or cards need to be turned over to check if the rule has been followed? So this problem people find much easier. If you think about it for a moment, you of course need to check the card which has a beer to make sure that the other side is a number that's 20 or more. You also need to check the 16 card to make sure that the 16 year old is not drinking beer. What about the coffee card? It doesn't matter how old the person is who's drinking coffee. That has nothing to do with the rule. And what about the 25 card? Well, the person who's 25 can drink whatever that person wants. So you don't need to check that card. They found that 75% of people correctly solve this version of the puzzle. But if you look at this puzzle and the original puzzle, they are logically exactly the same puzzle. So why do people solve one puzzle at a much higher rate than they solve the other puzzle. Many times we incorrectly think about the world as logical and illogical people. But logical thinking is a skill that we can work on. If you practice bodybuilding, you're going to build muscles. If you work on fashion, you're going to look better. If you work on chess skills, you're gonna play chess better. Similarly, if you work on logical thinking and problem solving skills, you're going to be better at solving logical questions. So do yourself a favor and try watching one video every single day about logical thinking and problem solving. You'll improve to the point that even mathematicians will be envious of your skills. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.